Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the M1917 Trench Carbine, aka the C96 Carbine. This is basically a hopped up pistol, something that's had a stock attached to it, a big extended mag, and an extended barrel with a grip on the front. So they've just taken a pistol platform, turned it into a little carbine, and given it to the assault class. It's kind of cool actually as it breaks a lot of the rules or rather the molds that the assault class has been bound to. Now first of all to get this weapon you're going to need to have the Turning Tides DLC and you will also need to perform 15 sidearm kills and perform 5 multi kills. Pretty easy with the sidearm kills, multi kills are just two kills at the same time so this could be from grenades, blowing up a tank, uh, just about anything that can get a multi kill qualifies and that shouldn't take you too much time at all. Once unlocked you'll notice that this gun doesn't perform anything like any other assault weapon in the game. In fact it performs much more like, I don't know, a medic weapon. It's semi-automatic, it has a decent magazine of 41 rounds before you need to reload, um, and it can be spam fired. Its hip fire is actually quite good, uh, very similar to the SMGs that are already in the game, but you're just going to have to spam fire like you would with a pistol. Popping up the simthick.com stats, we can see that this gun actually does 28 damage in close quarters, which again, pretty much no other SMG does, and that means that you're going to be able to four shot your opponent as opposed to the usual five shots that other SMGs SMGs require. Now of course this is a semi-auto weapon and it only shoots at 359 rounds per minute so it's the slowest firing weapon out there and that's kind of how it balances out. It's not going to out DPS anything like an Automatico or Hellrigal or really any of the fully automatic SMGs but uh, it will make better use of each shot that you have. You're going to be doing more damage per shot and you're going to have a way bigger magazine than most SMGs. Obviously the Hellrigal has a huge amount of damage potential as well. We also have a 460 meter per second muzzle velocity making it faster than your Automatico MP18 Hellrigal. It basically becomes significantly easier to hit moving targets at further ranges with this, which is nice because you have so much ammo you rarely can plink away at targets at further ranges. You're never going to out damage any of them. This is a very low DPS weapon at further ranges, but you have enough ammo and enough accuracy to really deal with targets at medium ranges uh, sort of effectively, as long as you get the drop on them. I wouldn't like engage with somebody who's got a superior weapon than you at medium range, but uh, you can definitely take people out who are not ready for it. Now, I can make this weapon look good, like really good in a video. I can get some crazy cool looking kill streaks and be like, man, this is the new best assault weapon in the game it's got all these awesome things going for it i had plenty of good games with it top in the server no problem that being said i understand how this weapon is designed and what the limitations are it's really the ultimate noob killer if you're a good player and you're in a server full of mediocre players you should be able to kill a lot of them because this has got a huge magazine. It's not going to work quite as well in maps that are more linear and the enemy know you're coming, but in maps that are a little more chaotic or at least allow you to get a lot of flanks in there. You don't want straight up firefights with this gun. You want to be able to flank around and hit people in the side or from behind. You'll notice that I get a huge amount of kills uh, in some of these clips here on unsuspecting enemies because I got 41 rounds in a mag and I can four shot kill my opponents and if I mix a headshot out on there even fewer so I can absolutely dominate people for example in this clip here I'm in the underground bunker on C and I managed to kill every single person in here the difference is that they're not really looking at me I flanked around came in from behind and didn't have to reload my weapon I easily was able to kill four opponents before needing to reload and then I end up finishing off a huge amount more of them with the M1911 it looks cool makes the gun look like a total badass weapon but the fact of the matter is is I just had a good flank on a bunch of un suspecting players who couldn't react well. The sad truth of the matter is that whenever I came up against a decent player using the Automatico, I would get gunned down pretty much every single time. This weapon just cannot compete with the Automatico in a close range or trench combat scenario. It does too much damage, it's too accurate, it's too easy to use versus this semi-automatic weapon. But when I'm going up against players who don't have automaticos, going up against medics with DMRs in close range, that's when this thing starts to excel. Even if I get the jump on the support class or manage to sneak up on some assault classes who are missing with their shotguns, that's when this thing starts to excel. But as soon as you run into that decent player with a high DPS weapon, 
you're going to fail. So this is trying to balance itself out in the sense that you have a huge amount of ammo in your magazine and you can really chew through the noobs in a server. It's the noob poning weapon and there's a lot of noobs in Battlefield 1 so actually this gun could be quite viable. It's just the fact that I generally speaking have always tried to review or balance my weapons based on going up against good competent players but realistically if you're just playing casually in a public server which is 99% of Battlefield then uh, this gun's going to be totally viable because of the average skill level of the average player. If you're a good enough player, you can dominate with this. If you're an average player and not particularly great, well, you might want to just stick to the Automatico or something like that because this might be a more difficult weapon to use. Switching over to the Suez Canal map on front lines, I absolutely tore it up with this gun. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's so many little flanking routes. I didn't have to get into straight up firefights with a lot of my opponents. I was getting behind them, shooting them in the back, getting weird little angles. This gun excels. So you don't have to reload it often. You can engage one opponent, switch over to another, and another, and another after that before you even need to pop a new mag in. So it's great for fast gameplay in that sense where you do just don't have time to reload. If you do need to reload, it's only got a 2.1 second reload time if you have a bullet still in the chamber, which is pretty darn easy. Now, now, if you happen to run through all 41 rounds, which is highly unlikely, you will get a 3.5 second reload. But at that point, you better be switching to your sidearm to finish off whoever the heck is left after 41 shots. Now, I've mentioned the design trend or design philosophy in the other Turning Tides weapons review videos that I've done, which is that they've put a lot of guns in this DLC that have a huge ammo capacity, the ability to kill many, many players but they usually have slower damage potential. So basically, they're filling more of a niche role here in somebody who wants a huge amount of damage potential, but maybe not the ultimate badass weapon for close quarter combat. It's gonna be a weapon that can sustain fire, can sustain damage over longer periods of time without having to reload in between kills. We have the new medic weapon, the new support weapon that has 250 rounds, and then we have this C96 or the M1917 trench car all which have a huge amount of ammo but just low rates of fire. These weapons would never be something you would want to pick in like say incursions where you're going up against one or two opponents. You're going to need a weapon with the highest damage output the fastest time to kill possible. None of these weapons fit that bill. When you put yourself in that big chaotic casual environment then these weapons can do a lot better. It's just that their effectiveness is largely dependent on how good your opponents are. You know, you got plenty of ammo to go through four guys with this weapon before reloading, but if those four opponents are decent, they're gonna kill you way before you have time to take advantage of the benefits that this gun has. Comparatively with like an Automatico, if you're a good player and you go into four mediocre opponents, well, you'll probably only be able to kill one player with that single magazine before you need to reload, in which case that gun actually becomes less effective at killing four newbie players, where this gun is better at killing four newbie players. It's a weird trade-off, and I feel like I'm not doing the greatest job of trying to explain the benefits of this weapon uh, accurately because I mean any gun is going to be good when you're fighting noob players but I guess guns with more ammo and more damage capacity end up being more effective when you're fighting noobs because you can kill more of them before you need to reload. In fact that's like one of the most common ways that I die when I'm running the Automatico is I just run out of ammo or I get caught mid reload or I have to switch to a sidearm and then I go down to a primary. So at the end of the day, what does that actually mean for the M1917 Trench Carbine? Is it a good weapon? Should you pick it in game? Does it make sense? Uh, I've had some very effective games with this. Games where I think I've gotten more kills with this gun than I would have if I was using the Automatico. But again, that's entirely because I think I was playing a lot of incompetent players and I had a gun that could just chew through all of them. So it's situational. I think I'm actually happy that this gun has been added to the game because it does offer some interesting variety for the assault class. Rather than just another SMG with fully automatic fire, this gives us a semi-automatic option for the assault class that has a totally different uh, design philosophy to it than the standard SMG. So it does offer some variety. I wouldn't say it's a high highly competitive weapon, but it is something I may consider switching to if I recognize I'm in a server with a lot of novice players and I want to try and maximize my killing potential. This might be the gun to do it if you're playing the assault class. Anyway, that wraps it up for my review of this gun. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Have you been using it? Have you been enjoying it? As always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, 
Signing off. Thank you.